alert. Kim Jong-un is in grave danger. Not Reports this morning the North Korean leader is in critical condition after heart surgery. <clears throat> Rumors have been swirling about the North Korean dictator's health ever since he had a procedure and after he missed this celebration for his grandfather's birthday last week. Now those rumors are reportedly on the radar of U.S. intelligence agencies, Brian. All right, he was last seen at a meeting 10 days ago. South Korea's government pushing back, saying it has not seen anything unusual out of the North. Fox sources say the White House is aware of the reports, but can't confirm his condition. Let's see if we can get the, the answer from uh, Robert O'Brien, National Security Advisor. Uh, Robert, great to see you. Uh, let me ask you, what could you tell us about Kim Jong-un? Or do you believe South Korea there is no problem, or the rest of the world that there is? Well, we're monitoring these reports very closely, and uh, as you know, North Korea is a very closed society. There's not a free press there. Uh, they're parsimonious with the information that they provide about uh, many things, including uh, the health of uh, Kim Jong Un. So we're, we're monitoring those developments closely. Uh, people should know that uh, we have a great intelligence community. We have the president, the vice president, Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Esper, General Milley. We've got a lot of watchmen on the towers uh, during this coronavirus crisis, making sure that uh, America is safe, whether it's from the virus or from uh, adversaries uh, abroad. So we're, we're keeping a close eye on developments in North Korea, as we are in other parts of the world. Ambassador, uh, could you tell us why the president decided to sign this executive order? He says he's going to, to temporarily suspend immigration. Look, we're, we're trying to do everything. The president's trying to do everything he can to put the health of the American people first during this crisis. And so uh, th this is one step. It's, it's not dissimilar to the, the restrictions on travel from China that he implemented back on January 29th at the very outset of this public health crisis. Uh, we think that, that uh, those restrictions save thousands or tens of thousands of American lives. They were criticized by some at the time. Uh, one uh, candidate, uh, Vice President Biden, said that it was xenophobic. Uh, Nancy Pelosi introduced a bill to ban the bans. Uh, but uh, the president's not going to be guided by politics here. He's going to be by guided by the health, uh, doing what's best for the health of the American people. Sure. And, Ambassador, of course, this is, just as the banner says below us, it is a temporary <laughs> suspension of immigration. And we know that federal statute does give him uh, the authority in cases of public health and things like that, it, although it is unprecedented. Uh, back in the 1918 pandemic with the flu, uh, I think the United States still allowed in 100,000 people. So I, we get the part about how it's trying to stem the tide of incoming infections. But at the same time, the president in his tweet, Ambassador, made it clear that this is also about safeguarding American jobs because there are so many people out of work right now and they need jobs. Well, this, this virus came to our shores from overseas, uh, sadly, and uh, not only has it affected the health uh, and, and caused the death of uh, many Americans, and our hearts and uh, prayers go out to those who have family members who are sick or struggling, who've lost uh, loved ones. And, and also, gosh, these uh, I was watching the interview that you did with Liam, uh, raising money to help our first responders. Those are our real heroes, the doctors, the nurses, the custodial staffs at these hospitals on the front line, uh, keeping the hospitals clean yeah. and free from infection. They're doing a great job, but there's been an economic cost here, too, and, uh, and the president's looking out for Americans on both fronts at, at every turn. So, uh, obviously, there's a big push to find out what China knew and why we still don't know everything about it. The president's saying we need to get in there and look around and find out where this all started, whether it was a Wuhan lab or whether it was actually in a wet market, which mysteriously has reopened. When the president complimented uh, the president of China early, was it because he was under a uh, under the illusion that he was getting all uh, accurate and full uh, and the full story about this virus? And does he regret those compliments that he threw at uh, President Xi? No, look, the president's always very complimentary in his, his dealings with foreign leaders. Uh, if the American people could be on the phone calls that he has with our, our adversaries and our friends, he's a real gentleman. Uh, he was the same way with President Xi, but he's been clear from the outset. Uh, we need to get the CDC into China. There's really a huge burden on China to tell us where this came from. Did it come from a lab? Did it come from a wet market? Neither of those are good answers, yeah. right? I mean, these wet markets are but, a, but Robert, are, it's, are, 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 are a no, host it's of you know, hosted plagues. 
Robert, don't you believe it? It's not. It's not something that they're obligated to do, it, and they still haven't done it. And I'm yeah. just wondering when are we going to get punitive with them, and why we just continue to put the analyst hat on, and we don't get more aggressive with them to come clean once and for all. Well, I, I think we're being pretty tough on China. And look, there are lawsuits that have been filed by folks out there. Some countries are looking at how to deal with, with China going forward. We certainly are. But the, remember, this is the fourth or fifth plague that's come out of China since 2000. We've had the avian flu. We had SARS. We had H1N1. And so whether these are coming out of labs that have sloppy uh, uh, procedures, whether they're coming out of the wet markets that are really horrific, if you watch some of those things, we, we've got to stop this. I mean, we've got to stop the export of these viruses from China. Uh, we're going to make our position. Position, and we have made our position on, on these issues very clear to the Chinese. I think it's becoming a worldwide uh, call now that uh, uh, China has to come forward with the information. I mean, you, if you take a look at, at how they've handled the virus with whistleblowers disappearing and uh, news, newsmen from, uh, and women from uh, the Wall Street Journal and New York Times being kicked out of the country, uh, and you contrast that to how Taiwan or Singapore or other countries have handled this, there, there's just a real big disparity there, and, and we've got to get to the bottom of what happened. Yeah, Ambassador, how do we do that? How do we hold China accountable when they're covering things up, they're getting rid of the whistleblowers? You know we're not going to ever be able to get in that lab. They're not going to let us in there to find out what happened if it really did start there. How do you do this? How do you investigate China? Well, we, we have a lot of tools in our toolkit, but one of the things I, I know, I think there are Americans that are, I, I understand there are lawsuits that are being filed here against China. Yeah, class action. We'll see, we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, but, but with some of these uh, uh, trial lawyers, uh, uh, they're, they're pretty dogged, and uh, the Chinese have a lot of assets around the world. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, right now, what we're doing is calling on the Chinese to cooperate, and, and we want to get along with China. We, we have a trade deal. We'd like to get along with China, but uh, China needs to, uh, to behave in a, in, in a fashion that uh, uh, makes them a responsible player in the world. And, and unfortunately, with the outset of this virus, it wasn't great, and uh, they, they've got to fix that. All right, uh, Ambassador Robert O'Brien's got a great op-ed, the pages of the Wall Street Journal. Check it out if you get the paper or online. Sir, thank you very much for joining us from the North Lawn. Looks like great a nice day here. in D.C. Beautiful day here. Thank you.